Good morning. good morning. Welcome to worship here at our Savior's Lutheran Church. It is good for us to be gathered together this day. My name is Rob James, blessed to be one of your pastors, grateful for all of our staff and volunteers that make worship and ministry happen uh, every day of the week. But it's good for us to gather together both in person and online. Those of you worshiping online, we're glad you're with us in worship. Hope that you'll use the comment section to just say good morning to one another as we celebrate that we're all gathered in community. Those of you who are here, uh, you maybe know, maybe it's your first time here, and if so, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. Otherwise, you know that we fill out an attendance card, one per household, and they're in the pew. That creates a bit of a game today because you have to work around the quilt to find an attendance card in front of you. But uh, this is our Welka Sunday. We are a congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. And Welka is women of the ELCA. We have an amazing Welka ministry here at Our Saviors, which is circle groups, uh, small groups of women that come together for fellowship and Bible study and support and learning. Uh, but one ministry of our Welka is our Due Day Ladies, a group that is here every week, uh, not just making quilts, they also make school kits and layettes and baby quilts. Uh, but you can see that quilting is a big part of their ministry. This is 375 quilts that have been made in the past year. Uh, and I love that they did it perfectly. I don't think you could get one more quilt in here uh, in any spot. So it is wonderful that uh, we have this ministry. We partner with Lutheran World Relief. These quilts will go to children and moms and dads around the world in places where there is a need, where they can be a blessing uh, to our siblings in Christ around the world. So during the prayers of the people, you'll see in that bulletin section, there's a part where we will name names. That's in your bulletin now. We've been changing up our bulletin. 
we'll read those first names. But in the very beginning of the prayers, we'll pray for those who receive these. I encourage you to just put your hands on these quilts when we do, as we just not only bless and give thanks for the work that has been done, but pray for those who will be blessed as they receive them. We'll hit all the announcements later on in the worship, uh, but you'll see that order that tells you when we're going to invite you to stand, when we're going to invite you to sit, when we're going to invite you to sing and pray, all that jazz. And so you'll notice that we're going to start by inviting you to stand as you are able. We worship together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we are people of the gospel, people of the good news of Jesus. I invite you to hear this good news. The Holy Gospel according to the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning with verse 11. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord.
We confess our sins before God and one another. God of promise, you have given us all we are and all we have. We still, we have not trusted you fully. We have tried to be God in our own lives, hurting ourselves and those around us in our attempts to control. Wash us clean in the waters of your salvation and bring us back into right relationship with you. God welcomes you home and with open arms and forgives you all your sin. By the sake of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, live in the promise of God's love, freely given. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of tender care, like a mother, you never forget your children, and you know already what we need. In all our anxiety, give us trusting and faithful hearts that in confidence and boldness, we may embody the peace and justice of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading from today for today comes from Mark, the first chapter. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. Word of God, word of life. Forward. We, uh, in the ELCA, through our predecessor bodies, we've been ordaining women for over 50 years. And so when we came here, when I came here, uh, and heard that Welcome Sunday, we always make sure we have a female preacher, because it's just coincidence you're stuck with two guys. Um, and as soon as I heard that, I knew I wanted to bring my friend, Pastor Danielle, here. Pastor Danielle Denise is the director for Evangelical Mission in the North Carolina Synod, and so we're delighted to have her. So let's all come sit up here, and I'm going to let my friend, Pastor Danielle, hey, how are you? talk to you today. Hello, hello. How are you all today? How are you? You're doing okay? Do you like this colder weather? No, you don't like it? Kind of a little bit? I'm actually from North Carolina. That's where I live. And it's a little bit hotter there right now. I didn't bring enough clothes for it to, although it's probably the same, it just feels colder here, right? And what that looks like. But I am so glad to be with you today. And I want to ask you two questions. For those of you that have worshipped in this sanctuary before, in this worship space, what looks different about the sanctuary today? What do you think? There's quilts everywhere. Did anybody hear the number that Pastor Rob shared of the number of quilts? No. Well, you want to take a guess? 305 is so close. Th Go ahead. 370 quilts are all around here. Isn't that amazing? But there's also something else in your worship space that's pretty special that I noticed, and it's a sign that is in lots of worship spaces. It's a symbol that Christians often share. There's a giant one behind your head right there. What is that? Yeah. It's a cross. Now, I want you to look around your worship space. Do you all see any other crosses anywhere? Where do you see them? Point them out if you see them. Right here? Right over there? There's one on the floor right here that somebody told me at 8.30. Where else do you see a cross? Oh, you see one over there? How about right behind you right there? Yeah, we see crosses all over the worship space. And here's what 
Today in our um, lesson, we hear about Simon's mother-in-law who is sick and God makes her well and then she starts serving. And anytime I hear that, I always think about a cross because a cross goes which way? Up and down and which way? Sideways, Sideways too. So I'm going to ask Pastor Rob to help me with something. Pastor Rob, come over here. Now, when we hear about Simon's mother-in-law and that she's serving, we know that she's loving her neighbor. Now, if Pastor Rob were just to be a beam like this, does that look like one part of the cross? No. Yeah, just the up and down part of the cross. But if Pastor Rob is standing like this, can he give anybody hugs? No. no? Claire, stand up because you're about the right height. Rob, can you try to hug Claire like this? Oh, all she gets is your stinky armpits. Are you kidding me? Just stinky armpits? If we are just people who walk around like this and not loving our neighbor, the world just gets our stinky armpits, right? That we're called to love the world like this. And so, just like Pastor Rob is standing like this, the crop, if we take a quilt and we try to wrap somebody in a quilt like this, what's going to happen? It's not going to wrap them in nice, fluffy love. It's just going to cover over them, right? So the cross, do you see? What other way does the cross go? Sideways. Sideways. Okay, Claire, up again. Is it a lot easier for Pastor Rob to hug someone if his arms are like this? Oh, there we go, right? So the world, God calls us to serve our neighbor. And so he says, put your arms so you can love the world, just like this quilt, is it a lot easier for us to wrap somebody up in a quilt? Oh, Miss Natalie. You, is it a lot easier for us to wrap you up like this? Oh, Miss Natalie, you're right. Yes, right? It's a lot easier for us to wrap the world like this. And do you know these quilts are going to go in a truck and they're going to go all the way around the world to share God's love. So today, I want you to do something for me, okay? Everybody put your arms up. Okay, don't, tell, don't smell each other's armpits, okay? We're just putting our arms up, right? But do we look like a cross right now? Yeah. No, we just look like people who are saying, hello, hello. God is saying today in our lesson that we are called to be servants. So then we need to put our arms like this, right? And we can show the world that we are giving God's love. So what I want you to do in just a minute, we're going to stick our arms like this. Then we're going to stick them out like a cross and we're going to yell nicely to all these people that God loves them. Okay, you think you can do it? The first service was a little too quiet. You think you can do it? Okay, get your arms ready. Right, we're not just supposed to be stinky armpits to the world, are we? Nope, we're called to put our arms like this. And when we put our arms like this, what are we telling the world? Right, you ready? We're going up, out, God. <laughs> All right, and then we can tell the world about God's love. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for all these quilts that are going to wrap the world in God's love. Help us, help us show your love to the world too. Amen. Thank you all for coming up. Again, it is so good to be with you today. It is a gift to be joined together from across this church. As I mentioned, I serve in North Carolina and I bring you greetings from our Bishop Tim Smith and all of the 197 congregations of the ELCA in the state of North Carolina. It is so good to be gathered with God's people and centered in God's word. Will you join me in prayer? Gracious God, may the words of our, my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts gathered in this place and online and wherever we may find ourselves this day, be pleasing in your sight, our rock, our strength, and our redeemer. 
Amen. So I just need to get something out there for you, especially those of you women in this room. As you read this text today, I didn't pick it so that I was telling you that you just needed to get up and get serving. I didn't pick this text so that you were thinking that I would tell you to cook and clean and serve dinner. I shared with a colleague that I was coming to preach on a Welka Sunday and that I had selected this text myself. And Pastor Katie said, why? This is terrible. She said, you're coming on a Women's Sunday. How did you pick this one? I joked with Katie over breakfast, so tell me how you really feel about this text, Katie. And she said, well, I just hate it. Because in the end, Simon's mother-in-law is making them dinner. And we were created for more than that. And I believe that. I believe that women throughout all time and space have been created in God's divine image to witness to Jesus in this world. And, beloved, I want to say today that this scripture is not about dinner. It's the text, the text of Simon Peter's mother-in-law that is the first resurrection story in the gospel. The first resurrection story. I know it might sound a little dramatic to describe it that way because it's only two verses in the Gospel of Mark and yet it is this moment in the first chapter of Mark where we see clearly Jesus taking our worst things, transforming them, and inviting people into the posture of resurrection so that the world might be changed by God's love. Theologian Frederick Beekner says that resurrection means that the worst thing is not the last thing. And who knows? Who knows for Simon Peter's mother-in-law whether this fever was the worst thing. Perhaps Simon Peter's mother-in-law was on the brink of death. Perhaps her family was listening to her labored breath and thought, we're never going to be the same. I don't think the details matter much here because when someone is sick or dying or when dreams are shattered or lives are destroyed, we feel it as the worst thing. And here in the first resurrection story in the Gospel of Mark, we learn the truth of the Gospel that the worst thing is not the last. Now let me say something here, because Simon Peter's mother-in-law is healed in this earthly life, and sometimes the worst thing is only healed in the eternal. Yet here in this story, Jesus encounters the worst thing and lifts her up, and she is healed. And there is resurrection. I mentioned this in Sunday school, but we've got to be careful as people of God to not ask for resurrection to be a rewinding. Because a lot of us want a God who just goes back to the day before the bad thing happened, right? We say, God, can you just rewind to back before they were sick or they took their last breath or before my world changed? And yet God is not a God of rewinding, but of resurrection, of making a new way possible. And yet, beloved, I know that it would be so much easier if we served a God of rewinding, right? But we don't. We serve a God who doesn't simply erase the worst things, but redeems them with grace and goodness. We worship a God who doesn't just say, let's go back, but let's move forward in a new way. And then we find ourselves asking the question, how do we do that? How do we move forward as God's people who've experienced transformation of our worst things? And here's the place where I wish for you type A personalities 
that I could tell you I've got a plan. I wish that this is the place where we could say as preachers, here are the next 27 steps to move through one of the worst things that God has transformed into healing. But I'm sorry to disappoint you this day because healing stories, resurrection stories aren't written that way in the gospel. They're not written with a strategic plan or overarching life goals. Just once I want a text to read, Jesus healed them and then they did this and this and this and here's what you should do next in your life, right? But none of them have that level of clarity because every healing story, resurrection story, especially in the Gospel of Mark, gives us one thing, the right next step. Here in the Gospel of Mark, when Simon Peter's mother-in-law is healed, she goes to serve. She does the right next thing. She's invited back into a community space to simply eat. And there's part of us that want more to the story. But then what happened and what happened and what happened? We're much more comfortable with a plan because then we can be in control of it, right? And yet when we do the right next thing, our God shows up with another next thing and another next thing. This week, as I have been thinking about this text, I've been wondering why God only gives us the right next thing and not the 27 steps. And then I learned something new about this text in Mark, that it is in every healing story in Mark, it accompanies a relationship that is restored. You see, God gives us the right next step, and it always involves community. And usually when we get the next 27 steps, what are we focused on? The steps and not the people. But here in the Gospel of Mark, every healing, service, every healing story includes people being invited back in to community. And so it strikes me that the first resurrection story is not only about the healing of a mother-in-law, but how healing, how in God's transformation of the worst things, our relationships are being made well. And beloved, it's, it's why I started thinking about the cross this week. Because so often in our relationships, we're looking for the plan to fix them. And God is inviting us to a posture of resurrection. A posture not of doing the 27 steps to fix it in the moment, but a posture of love for the world. There's an early church father Irenaeus, who used to say how fitting it is that God died on a cross, for how else would God have embraced the whole world? You see, I don't think this text is about Simon Peter's mother-in-law getting well and then making dinner. I think this text is about a woman who maybe his arms were frail from fever, that were lifted up and transformed into a posture of love and embrace, a posture of resurrection. You see, beloved, I don't know how you walked into church today. Maybe your arms aren't frail from fever, but they're exhausted from the grief of a pandemic. Maybe your arms aren't frail from fever, but they have been trying to hold together shattered pieces. Or maybe your arms aren't frail at all, but they are ready to fight and they're in a posture of defensiveness to try to protect the one thing that you have loved and known. And wherever you are, Jesus comes to you just like Jesus did to Simon Peter's mother-in-law and lifts you up. 
lifts you up so that your arms might be transformed, so that they might stretch out and embrace the world. And if the way you can love your neighbor is cooking dinner, go for it. But this text isn't about dinner. It's about the call of people who have experienced the resurrection love of God to extend their arms and embrace. I want to close by saying this. I was overwhelmed in the first service as I was preaching, thinking about the arms and the fingers and the hands that have created all of these quilts. I was praying earlier today that one of them goes to Ukraine to wrap a child in love. Or one of them makes it to the coast that continues to get hit by hurricanes. Wherever they land, they are an embodied gift of resurrection love in this world. And beloved, I hope you don't just settle for quilts because you've got your own arms, right? To embrace and love your neighbor. So may you experience the gift of God's resurrection love and be part of loving your neighbor in this world. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Faithful God, on this Welka Sunday, we give thanks as we celebrate the lives of the women who fought the good fight and stood up for the gospel and the truth of Scripture yesterday and today. We give thanks for the gifts you have given to those who use them to serve in your kingdom in our midst. 
God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the ministry of Lutheran World Relief and their partners around the world. We celebrate the ministry of the Due Day Ladies as we pray a blessing upon those who will receive these quilts, school kits, layettes, and health kits all around the world. God of grace, you make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers, God of grace. Bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power and presence at work where it is least expected. Give your life, strength, and wisdom to all in need, especially Joanna, Gert, Fred and Lois, Ron, Dave, Lynn, Jerry, Don, Charlie and Jill, Ginny, Paula, Roger, Stephanie, Sandra, Wayne, and the families and friends of our saviors, Dorothy, Phyllis, Jamie, Tara, George, Dave, Darren, Karen, Anne, Elijah, Frank, Paula, God of grace, hear our prayer. As with your people Israel, remind this congregation of your saving acts. Remind us how your faithfulness brought us through difficulties and sustained us despite our weaknesses. Establish the cross as the center of our life together, God of grace. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the earthly life of Marlon Poole, who entered his eternal home to live forever with you this past Thursday. Comfort family and friends with your loving embrace. God of grace, hear our prayer. Praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place. Trusting you accompany them in poverty, persecution, and in every trial. We trust you abide with your people always. God of grace, hear our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Also with you. I invite you to share the peace of Christ with those around you. pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make these gifts a banquet of blessing 
and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Those uh, worshiping at home, now is the time to gather your elements together and bring them into the worship place and receive these words. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink. This is the blood of Christ given for you. For you here in this place, the table is set and all are welcome. Please be seated.
God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive a blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Now please do three summers up and then sit back down. <laughs> <laughs> and Put little symbols of when we do somersaults in worship up there, so I'm still waiting. Before we finish our worship with a, a song together, I just want to share some announcements. First off, again, we're so glad you're here. If this happens to be your first time, know that you are fully welcome into the ministry of our Savior's Lutheran Church. We'd love to connect. Again, I'm Pastor Rob, Pastor Scott, our associate pastor, Paula Mowbray is our director of worship and music, and Cindy Halavin, our connections ministry director, and other staff and leaders around. So we'd love to connect even more so. What a joy to gather on this Welka Sunday to celebrate God's love for all of us in the ways that we are called to go and love our neighbors near and far, each and every one of us. Guys, that's us too, in case you didn't get that. This, this wasn't just women, right? All of us are called to go and love. So uh, a few things we want to highlight if you've got your announcements, things coming up. Uh, today we did Bible adventures during Sunday school. Um, but if you have a three-year-old or third grader or sixth grader that we don't know about, Next Sunday is our Bible Sunday, and we give Bibles to all of our three-year-olds, third-graders, sixth-graders, and 50-year members. So if you think maybe Cindy doesn't know, or maybe with the pandemic we missed a Bible to a now four-year-old or fourth-grader, just connect with Cindy so we can make sure we have a Bible for you next week. Uh, I think I shared this already, but we're adding, I believe it's 11 new 50-year members, which puts us now over 100 active members that have been members for 50 years or more, uh, which is remarkable and talks a lot about this community and what a joy it is to be a part of it. If you're involved in the music or media ministry at Our Saviors or want to be, make sure to connect with Paula right away. The Koblers are hosting a potluck today uh, for all involved in the music and media ministry, and you are certainly welcome to join that fun day of fellowship uh, later on this afternoon. I encourage you, uh, if you're available on October 8th, to attend our bishop's installation. As Danielle pointed out, there's 65 synods in the ELCA. Every synod has a bishop, and the Northern Illinois Synod just elected a new bishop, Bishop Stacy Fiddler. She'll be installed on October 8th. It's happening here in Rockford. Uh, I have a wedding. I asked a couple if we could change the date of their wedding. Unfortunately, they said no. Uh, but I encourage you to go and just not only to pray for and support her and her call, but to see the church come together in that ministry. It's a, it's a joy to be a part of those big worship services. Um, golf play day. So not only is next Sunday in worship Bible Sunday, but then we have a golf play day. This is just a day of fellowship. So we're going to go golfing at 2 o'clock, and then we'll have dinner together. You don't have to golf to join us for dinner. Just sign up so we know to let you know when we're heading to the restaurant. So sign up today uh, out at the information table and join us either for golf and dinner or both. Both or just dinner, whatever. 
Uh, as we mentioned, we have an amazing welcome ministry here at Our Saviors. Uh, we just had a fabulous event this month going to the uh, Nicholas Conservatory together. And now coming up on October 4th, Welka is headed to Anderson Gardens. This is a Welka event. Uh, space is limited. But ladies of Our Saviors, we hope you'll come out. We'll meet for a tour of Anderson Gardens and then go into Fresco, the restaurant. Uh, you'll pay for your own lunch as you you pay for your tour and for the lunch on your arrival. So uh, come, sign up and then come and join that event on October 4th. One thing I really want to make sure you have on your calendars is October 21st. Uh, the bridge is a space that we've named as our old sanctuary. We see that space being used for community, for how we bring people together. And so these bridge events, this is our first one, is an opportunity for us to not talk about church life, but talk about who we are together as community. And our first one's just gonna focus on art. And so we'll have music and poetry and art, and it'll be a chance to bring neighbors together and have conversation on how art from various cultures influences us. So hope that you'll put it on your calendar, and I hope you'll invite some friends, especially perhaps those friends that aren't connected to a community of faith, to come and just be in a safe, fun conversation together with others in our community. Uh, there's other announcements in here. I encourage you to check out. The one other thing I do share is that we need to announce the death of our member, Marlon Poole, who died this Friday. Uh, we'll be sending out information, but the service will be this Saturday here at Our Saviors, a 10 o'clock visitation, 11 o'clock memorial service, and luncheon following. So those of you that pray with Marlon and Kim, uh, we encourage you to continue to hold them in your prayers in this time of grief. With that, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together. Let's go make a difference.
in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Oh